I think each individual is a critical piece to this jigsaw puzzle. If it's not for their testimony, then we're missing a, a critical piece. Ultimately, you can't put together a puzzle unless you have all the pieces. Lou Elizondo has just met with a pilot who says he engaged in a mid-air showdown with a UFO in southern Peru in 1980. One theory is that the object was a U.S. reconnaissance drone, but the primitive drones at that time don't match the pilot's description of what he saw. No había alas, no había motores, antenas, ventanas, cúpula, nada. O sea, era liso por todos lados. Oh, I think it's gonna be better, just black shirt. Yeah, yeah. And now, a commercial pilot has come forward with a similar sighting in 2019. We're just gonna mic you up over here really quick. He's asked not to be identified. I want to thank you very much for, for having the, the, the courage to come forward. Thank you. In this particular case, this individual wants to keep his identity protected because he was afraid he may lose his job. First of all, uh, what kind of pilot are you? What do you fly? I'm an uh, airline captain. I fly for a big carrier, and I fly an Airbus A320. The pilot has flown domestic and international flights for the past 11 years. It happened on March 1st, 2019. I was flying to Argentina. It was a red-eye flight in the middle of the night. At about 2 a.m., his Airbus A320 is flying at 35,000 feet, approximately 150 miles off the coast of Chile. As a pilot, you're kind of used to seeing like shining stars, mm -hmm. ISS. I've actually been lucky to see the meteors come in, which are very small, which have this green color. But this time, he sees a bright white orb tracking the plane to the west. I saw this bright light, and I was like, OK, what is this? I took out my phone, and when I zoomed, I got to see this circular shape. If you want to see it, I can show you the video. I would love to see yeah. that video. But that's the video. The pilot plays the video for Elizondo. It appears to show an orb inside another orb. It started like moving in a wave pattern, from left to right, right to left. It was like, definitely bigger than the 747. The pilot pans to the radar screen to record his exact location. I'm glad he did that. That's smart. That's I'll, the I... only way, I think, to have, in a way, evidence where it was, what I'll it was. How long did you observe this light outside the cockpit window? Five minutes. Wow, OK. What it is, I don't know. What you filmed there, it's a real object. Now, I don't know what it is, but you have, that's, that's something that actually occurred. Now, maybe it has a terrestrial explanation, maybe it doesn't. But one thing we do know is that is real, whatever that is. But what was it? The pilot shares a video that appears to be of the same object taken two days earlier and nearly 2,000 miles away over Peru's largest airport. But OK, this is actually what happened in Lima. The Peruvian Air Force investigated the incident, concluding they were unable to identify the orbs seen over the airport. That is a pretty bizarre looking craft. That doesn't look like anything that we have. But one theory may provide a simple explanation. Over the past decade, Google has launched a fleet of high altitude balloons to provide internet access to remote areas around the world. Called Project Loon, these large white balloons fly above Peru as high as 65,000 feet and could have floated from Peru to Chile. So they have Google balloons all around Peru. They stay a certain amount of time, and after that, they go down to the Earth. So if this was, let's say, one of these balloons, would you have been made aware of it by ATC? Totally. Because totally. it's an air flight safety issue. Of course, yeah. At this point, it's too early to tell if what the pilot saw is indeed the same objects that were reported over the Lima airport just days prior. There are some people that are absolutely confident it was a Google balloon. There's other people said there was no Google balloons in that area. So I think it's too premature to tell. The cell phone video makes it difficult to tell if the object displays any of the five observables common to UFOs. So Elizondo sends it to retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel Chris Cook. 
an aviation consultant and former Top Gun pilot. Hey there, Chris. Hey, Lou, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Elizondo wants to know if the strange object in the video looks like anything Cook has seen before. Can an aircraft commercial or military look like that from far away? I, typically, you would see navigation lights, right? One of the things that we do when we're at altitude, especially flying out in the middle of nowhere, if you do spot another aircraft, you turn wing lights or the landing lights on. It's kind of like a courtesy. But I've never seen anything like that where it's just one spherical light outside of maybe a bright planet. Elizondo wants to explore the theory that the object might be a Google balloon. I've heard of these things, but why would a balloon be illuminated that brightly at that altitude? And if it is a balloon, then you would expect there to be some closure on it, right? Because it should be stationary. It's a little baffling. One of the statements the pilot made to me is that he, he had the impression that there was this oscillation. Do you have any idea at all what might give the appearance of some sort of oscillation? Are there aircraft that will pivot back and forth or? Not in my experience. I have not ever witnessed any, any type of aircraft at that altitude that have those characteristics that you just explained. But does it show any of the five observables? When I look at these incidents, I'm not just looking at video, I'm comparing it to the five observables, extreme acceleration and hypersonic velocities and no control surface, flight surfaces, no, no obvious means of thrust or propulsion. Is there anything in that video that you see that you say, aha, that's an unusual performance characteristic? This looks like nothing I've ever seen. What's the likelihood that this could be a traditional aircraft? Scale of one to 10. Uh, zero. Wow. To Cook, the object clearly isn't a traditional aircraft, but what is it? In this particular case, there's information out there that does not neatly fit within the categories of information we have. Does it mean it's not relevant? No. We have to take all the data points. Maybe it'll make sense. Maybe there's more than the five observables. 